This is an A-level biology video all about dihybrid crosses. Just so you know, this really useful PowerPoint which I'm using to aid my explanation was provided by Tony Graham from the TES website. So I'm just making sure I'm acknowledging that here. So dihybrid crosses, we're looking at the genetics topic. You'll have looked at monohybrid crosses at GCSE and IGCSE. We're just getting slightly more complex here. So dihybrid crosses are those where we consider the inheritance of two characteristics at the same time. This makes sense because di means two, so that's why we're looking at two characteristics being inherited at the same time. Here, the two different genes are inherited on two different chromosomes. The reason we're pointing that out is because we need to acknowledge that these genes are unlinked, and that will make a real difference to the gametes which are produced in a separate video, I'll be talking about what happens when those genes appear on the same chromosomes, and by definition, those genes are linked. But for dihybrid crosses, we're looking at unlinked genes. Now, hopefully you've met Gregor Mendel before. He was a monk who was basically the forefather of inheritance. He studied peas, so Mendel investigated the inheritance of two characteristics of pea plants at the same time. He looked firstly at seed shape, where the round shape is dominant to the wrinkled shape, and secondly, he looked at the seed colour, noticed that yellow coloured seeds were dominant to green. And so if we look at the four possible combinations of these two characteristics, we notice therefore that peas can be round and yellow, round and green, wrinkled and yellow, and wrinkled and green. Mendel carried out a cross between two pure breeding plants, this therefore means that th these plants are homozygous because that's what pure breeding means, which means they have two of the same allele. And the two pure breeding plants he crossed was round yellow seeds and wrinkled green seeds. So let's have a look at that first cross. It's been really handy that we've got the pictures here so you can actually see them. There's our round yellow phenotype. Here's our wrinkled green phenotype. Because we were previously told that round was dominant and as was the color yellow, this explains therefore why they're given by the uppercase version of the letters. We were told that the wrinkled green versions of those seeds were recessive and that explains why we're seeing the lowercase version here. And therefore we know that all the gametes produced by the round yellow seeds will be capital R, capital Y. Remember the gametes are the sex cells. And produced from the wrinkled green seed, we know that all those gametes will be lowercase r, lowercase y. And so if we were to do a cross over here, we can see that all our seeds would have this genotype, as indeed they do, and that obviously corresponds to that round yellow seed. So all the F1 generation would be heterozygous, meaning that they have different alleles for both characteristics, meaning that they would all be round and yellow. And then, because it's very similar to what Mendel did with the monohybrid crosses, he then crossed two of the F1 generation together. So we're taking two of these seeds, you can see them here, and we're crossing them. So we know again that their phenotype will be round yellow, but their genotype, as we've already said, was that heterozygous genotype, meaning that you've got a huge combination of gametes being produced. And that's the major difference here when you're looking at dihybrid crosses. These alleles can rearrange themselves in any way. So that's why we've got capital R, capital Y here, capital R, lowercase y here, lowercase r, capital Y here, lowercase r, lowercase y here. And that's the same for both seeds. And so when we do our cross, we need a giant Punnett square for this, which we've got here. And handily, we've been shown what that phenotype would be. So we've got our dominant phenotype here with our round yellow seeds. The same is true here, here and here. The reason it's gone green at this point is because we have that homozygous recessive genotype. And as we look down, there'll actually only be one seed, which is green and wrinkled. And that's because it has the homozygous recessive genotype. So if we were to look at our ratios, you literally just count them from the table. How many round yellow seeds do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And here they are. How many round greens? One, two, three. How many wrinkled yellows? One, two, three. And finally, that one wrinkled green seed. And as you can see, we have done a ratio. We've pointed out how those phenotypes link to the ratio. And notice this 9 to 3 to 3, 1 is the typical ratio expected in a dihybrid cross. So if you're ever doing a dihybrid cross with unlinked genes, which involve that heterozygous genotype, you will find a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio.
And how did we ensure that those gametes were produced? Well, that's due to the law of independent assortment, which states that each member of a pair of alleles may combine randomly with either of another pair. So let's look at an example past exam question. In cats, black fur colour is dominant to brown fur colour, short fur is dominant to long fur, and again, we need to point out that these traits are unlinked. Draw a genetic cross to show the outcome of two heterozygous black short furred cats breeding. Here's the mother and the father. Let's start with our phenotype. We know that they're both black and they both have short fur. In terms of their genotypes, we know that they're heterozygous, which means those alleles need to be different. So we've got a huge number of gamete combinations. And it will be the same for both cats. And so we're doing a huge Punnett square here. I've just pulled those gametes out that I just worked out. They're running on either side of that table. We could label which one's the mother, which one's the father. And then if we do the crosses, we can see how the various genotypes have occurred. And then underneath, I've linked the genotypes to the respective phenotypes. And so again, we have that crucial 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. And that's black short, black long fur, brown long, brown short, and finally brown long.